Hello one and all, I'm Casual Raz and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Today we're taking a look at cooling. Uh, specifically cooling these sort of oxygen generation systems. Because they get a bit hot. Oh yes. Uh, I really like the self-powered oxygen generator. It's so awesome. It runs itself once you set it up and it's working. You pretty much forget about it. The only downside is, because of its compact nature, as you can see this is the full size one here, it's pretty small considering it runs itself. It gets stupidly hot once it's powered up though. We're talking 50 to 70 degrees. The tubes don't like it, it fills your base full of hot oxygen. Uh, so that's the full size version, which is a personal favourite of mine when I'm let's playing. Uh, I do like, love it. I recently tried the smaller version though, because the fact is I don't have hundreds of tubes so I don't need this much oxygen generation is crazy. They kick out a lot, to be honest. So yeah, so usually, lately I've been going with this one. Uh, the problem is it's so small, it's very difficult to cool it. So you're left with a few options, which is usually you'd throw like a gas pump under here and send your oxygen off to be cooled separately. The problem with this is that requires a lot of power. Well, a reasonable amount of power, considering this is free, it's not too bad, I suppose, but, and you're only getting a small amount of the oxygen that's actually been generated up and away to be cooled, which yeah, kind of sucks. You can get a wheezewort in there somewhere, I suppose you could put some down here. Uh, but basically, with my base designs, I always, I tend to go uh, four tall and then multiple levels. In fact, have I done it over here? This is the debug base, so it's a bit of a, ma uh, a, bit of a mess, really. Yeah, this kind of setup, four tall bases, basically, that's what I do. So in a minute we'll jump over to my let's play base in debug mode and we'll have a fiddle because I'm intrigued if I can get this thing to actually cool down using the system I've kind of put together which is overly engineered completely and probably can be done much simpler but I love it so yeah. Uh, let me show you the basic example of the two systems I came up with for doing this. So where's the main one? It's in here somewhere. There it is. Oh I emptied it. There, doesn't matter. Right so for addition of two rows so there's the usual size there. Can I highlight that? No, I can't. For an addition of this row here and this row here, you can add in a liquid cooling system into your electrolyzer. Oh my god, it's still really cold. It's been off for ages. Wow. I'm surprised. Basically, the idea is we throw a load of liquid, uh, whether it be water, oil, or I guess polluted water if you're mad, or you know, something stupid like liquid oxygen. That'd be crazy. Uh, to cool down this using the wonderful brand new Thermo temp shift plates. They are absolutely awesome. Basically, the Thermo shift plates are 800 kilos in mass. Let's check. Uh, let's go with granite. So you can make these things out of whichever material you uh, suited. And it requires 800 kilos. So wherever you put one of these things, that's 800 kilos of mass with the properties you desire where you want it, which is excellent if you want to cool things down, because a few patches ago, before the automation update, you would have to have used liquid bridges and uh, what were they called, the statues, stuff like that. See, they're 400 kilos, so this thing is twice as better, twice as better, twice as good in a third of the space, basically, and you can link them together to make chains. So as you can see behind here, it's a bit crowded I know. We don't need the lot of wire bridges anymore. The further shift plates are at the back. So the idea is to cool this section and then using granite tiles because you can't actually place shift plates under tiles. But as you can see the lip of the plate hits the edge of the tile so if the tile is conductive heat will pass through. So shift plates at the back, granite tile, shift plates behind here and then that is what gives you the ability to liquid cool this entire area with stupid amounts of liquid. We're talking a thousand kilos per tile. It's a lot of liquid. So if you could cool the liquid down to the temperature you desire, then in theory, you should be able to use climate control in your base, pretty much. So this is system one. It relies on a mini pump, which kind of sucks because plastic. It's a pretty late game, uh, but it does work. It pumps in until it, the vent overpressurizes. Uh, in this case, it was chilled oil down here, but you can use water and that's what we'll be testing with in a moment. Basically it pumps it in and if the temperature comes too high, it starts pumping out the 
presumably warmed up uh, coolant using the mini pump back down to the balancing chamber here and we'll have to discuss that as well because yeah somebody did mention that I hadn't talked about it and it is true I didn't I presumed everyone knew what balancing chambers were mm, it's pretty simple it shouldn't take too long to go through it's not like I'm very good at this game anyway don't tell anyone so yeah that's the basic idea and I also came up with another version which uses less power which I really like so if you're like me you like symmetrical bases and tidy bases where everything's a set size and you plan out where you want everything to go if you switch around the electrolyzer and pump uh, positions instead of this way you have them switched around so the pump the electrolyzer on the outside of the base you could actually make oh did I break that tile I broke that tile whoops let's fix that that might have been a pressure issue after look into that you can make this little setup here which uses no power to empty Although we do appear to have an issue. Hmm, that's weird. Hold on. Pressure. That pressure's really low considering where it is, if above 700, empty. Huh. Shouldn't be having pressure issues. It could be because I've loaded in the game again and I may have broken something. The basic gist of it is uh, it fills up here, and instead of using a pump to remove it, you just, when the temperature and the pressure are correct, you dump it out. And this door stays open for 30 seconds to make sure it completely empties and then it closes up so for example if the hydro switch is above wow the pressure's getting high uh, 700 and the thermal switch is uh, above a certain set temperature so let's say in this case it would have been 25 degrees to make a nice relaxed environment for our duplicants because they're wonderful yes we love them so much uh, yeah it will dump out if it gets above that the oil being pumped in was at 20, give or take. So basically between 20 and 25 was your range of uh, temperature. And once it hits this, it'll cool down the electrolyzer and oxygen to that temperature. So let's say if it went above our set temperature, it will dump out everything over a 30 second period. Blah, 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 all the way down to our uh, balancing chamber. Wow, that's a lot. That's weird. And after 30 seconds, it will relock because the hydro pump now says yes I have no liquid but there's no point in running this thing empty and it will refill with freshly cooled uh, oil or water whichever you choose so let's jump into our main base and build on these things because my main base is getting a bit hot oh yes okay and welcome to the main base as you can see it's a little bit mm, of a mess it really is but here is our self-powering oxygen generation system and as you can see, it's getting a bit hot. Now, if that's the main cause for the whole base heating up, I'm not 100%. We have abyssalated this area off, so the power plant should be mostly isolated. Let's check out the guys is isolated. But we're still heating up, and I think it's because of how I'm generating my oxygen, which is currently kicking out at 51 degrees. Duplicates are starting to get a little bit angry with that. Everything's abyssalite. All the pipes and everything. So what we're going to do is change around how we create our oxygen. Food is decayed, not a problem when we're in debug mode. That reminds me, because this is actually the one I let's play on. Uh, let's call it main base debug. Debuff. Debuff, yes. Whoa, easy now. Did that save? Yes, it did. Okay, because I don't want to actually mess with this base in debug mode and have that show up in the let's play. That's not cool. Okay, so I did set up a cooling system here. This is how you usually kind of do it. You pump the oxygen away from your generation, send it through some cooling, and pump it to the base, which, you know, should work. It's not proving super effective, and I don't know if it's because I'm not cooling enough of the oxygen, or is it just because I'm crap at the game. But right now, we're going to upgrade this to liquid cooled and see if it truly works. We're going to do it in debug mode because it will take a bit of time otherwise to get it all done. And we have two of them to do. And I have no balancing chamber right now. I don't even have any oil right now. So I'm going to get on with that and we'll see where we get up to in a moment. Okay, so I've set up the basic uh, electrolyzer self powering system. Just one of them because, yeah, I shouldn't need too much. Just waiting for a duplicate to come along and power it. Let's get that done. Once it's going, it should pretty much run itself with very little duplicate interaction. See how this instantly gives us a load of hydrogen. Now, I did prime the system, admittedly, with a bit extra. 
but as long as you prime it right and you don't get any oxygen up in here, hydrogen will only flow across to here. And oxygen will go down this way, which is pretty awesome. Now this is a brand new electrolyzer, so it's not heated up yet. So I'm going to give it some time to heat up back to its 50 degree mark. Hopefully nothing will go crazy wrong between here and there, because yeah, everything's a bit knackered. These walls down here doing all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to let that heat up. It shouldn't take too long because the surrounding area is quite hot. So there is a, um, some rumours going around as well that oxygen generated by the electrolyzer always comes out at 70 degrees. And I believe that is absolutely correct. They checked the game code a while back and that's what it does. Uh, now there is some situations where you do see the oxygen coming out of it. See right now it's 34 and the electrolyzer is within that sort of range. Huh. No it is. Basically what that is, is the electrolyzer is made of copper ore and 200 kilos of it. And if you've got this thing sat on airflow tiles in the system like we've got right now, that's even more mass uh, that can be cooled down or heated up by the machinery around it. So when you make this thing, uh, basically when it's first running, it is kicking out oxygen at 70 degrees, but it's kicking out a thousand, is it a thousand per second at eight to one ratio? Let's see, 880 grams per second of hydrogen and 112 grams per second of uh, hydrogen, 880 grams of oxygen. Now, it never runs at full power in a normal game because, yeah, it overpressurizes very quickly and very easily. So, basically, what happens is the gas is produced, it in instantly touches this like, cooled or very cold metal and surrounding frames, it instantly cools down to a lower temperature than 70 degrees. That's what's happening, basically. The gas temperature is always the same to produce, regardless of the water temperature or the machine's temperature itself. The machine's just acting as a heatsink as soon as it's produced, so it's isolated from that system. But it works quite well, which means we can use cooling to get the exact oxygen temperature we want, well, within 5 degrees-ish. Right, so where are we at now? We're at 51 degrees. It's getting hot. So I'm going to let that heat up a little bit more, and we'll go build the balancing chamber. It's, uh, somewhere nearby. Hmm. Okay, so the balancing chamber's basically complete. Let's just wire in some power, shall we? Hmm. That might help, I think. Awesome. Right, so a balancing chamber, basically the principle is uh, this is our main chamber where we cool our coolant. Why did I use oil? We we're meant to be using water. Let's change that out real quick. No problem. Debug mode for the win. Let's see. Water, water, water. You may have, wait, wait, there we go, water, liquid, 297 is about right, paint, I'm going to move on that, well, might do, okay, so there we go, we have water at 23 degrees, now, I have set up the plumbing with a, a thermo switch here, so if the temperature is above 20, this uh, liquid shut off will open and allow water to flow into the aqua tuner. It'll then go from the tuner back into our um, coolant reservoir. What this does is keeps the temperature controlled, and if it starts to go up, it will cool it down, which is pretty awesome. Now, the tuner itself is in a polluted water basin. Now, the reason polluted water is good for cooling tuners when submerged is because we can make polluted water when we want. We can make it at a reasonable temperature as well, and then we can just destroy it with um, fertilizer makers. They literally destroy heat. So, as the temperature comes up in here, this will activate if it gets say above 70, it's probably a bit high, admittedly, and it will pump away the hot polluted water to the fertilizer makers, destroying it. Just remember to use a bit slight uh, piping, dear God. And then um, fresh water, well, fresh polluted water will come in at a cooler temperature, keeping this nice and cool. So there is shift plates behind, as you can see, and that would allow, so when hot water comes back and drips here, it will allow the temperature to dissipate quicker across the entire chamber. It's important the entire chamber is, a, is as close to the same temperature as possible for it to be a proper balancing chamber. Yeah, you could do this with gas I think as well to be honest, but I don't think it'll be as, as effective. But hmm, maybe easier to put together, I'm not sure. So, uh, We are almost done. If you actually change it a bit, I forgot to put in these tiles and the shift plates. So this is how it should be. Admittedly, the airflow tiles like this keep giving me a lot of trouble when the water pressure gets high and I think it's somewhat to do with like an item being left inside the tiles or something so these might all become granite again if it annoys me so anyway let's try it are we all hooked up yeah I think so we have a pump coming out oh we haven't got our 
thermal sensor for the turnpipe. Where's the automation thing? Come on. There we go. Okay, so if this... What are we going to aim for? 25? 25 sounds good. If this is over 25, it will pump out the warmed up water. Simple. In theory. What temperature are we at now? Wow, it's... Oh, it's because I put the shift plates in. It's cooled down a little bit because the granite was cold. Basically, if this opens up, it'll send the uh, aqua tuner. It'll always send upwards as well. Which is this the best way I've found of doing it. If I use a bypass on the aqua tuner, it behaves weird. Like one in every ten will escape and miss, and the aqua tuner will complain. It's really strange. So I found the liquid shut off the best way of doing it, to be honest. Also, don't use the same vent uh, on the incoming because you've got a thousand grams coming back this way. And you got 10k coming back this way. Yeah, they won't mix basically, it's max capacity, so you have to use two to get full throughput if needed, basically. Right, so let's turn it on. Or should we wait for the tiles to warm up? See, we're only at 30. I want it to get to full temperature. So we'll come back to when it gets to full temperature to see how quickly it cools it down. So as we wait for those tiles upstairs to heat up. Ah, oh, son of a bee, hold on one second. Let's disconnect that for a little bit, just for the sake of making a mess. Keeping our experiment relatively controlled. Yeah, I'm not as good as Brofgar at this sort of thing, that's for sure. But, you know, I like to mess about with this stuff. It's fun. Okay, so we are currently cooling down our balancing chamber to roughly where we want it. The downside to the Aqua Tuna, as amazing as it is, because it is super efficient, is it cools by 14 degrees every time. And water doesn't like to get too cold. This is where oil does have the advantage. You can go down to minus 30. Well, it freeze, it'll freeze freeze at minus 40. You can get down to minus 26 and it can go through the aqua tuner. It probably won't freeze and break things. Maybe. I hope. So anyway, that's pulling in water. It's going through the aqua tuner. It's going in at 23. It's coming out at 9. Now the idea is... This is going to cool down and spread the... Black, well, it's going to distribute the change in temperature across the entire chamber quickly, if possible. Because if this area here cools down, and this area here doesn't, it will keep pumping. And this will get colder and colder, and eventually it will hit this, and it will break, because it will jump from like 20 something here straight down to 9, it will freeze the water, everything will go tits up. So it's important you have a very controlled balancing chamber. Not that I'm like one to talk about these sort of things scientifically, because I'm not a clue. This is just the experiment I found. It works best for me, and it really did work quite well, but I've never tried it with water. Oil, I had some leeway if I got it wrong. <laughs> so we'll see. So we're down to 20 here. As you move across to the right, we're at 22 still. So maybe two of these would be wise. Mm, yeah, possibly, and, and or. And the thing is, because there's so much water in here, once it's done, it won't very often run, which is excellent for saving power. When you're first setting it up, it will run quite a bit. You'll need to have some power ready. Once it's done, it's done, basically. So we're down to 19 here. That's too low, really. A bit too cold. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to set up an AND gate to control that. So don't want it getting too cold. So let's just throw that there. It doesn't have to be pretty right now. So I'm going to throw that there. I'm going to throw a hydro switch there. We're going to rewire this hydro switch. Sorry, a thermal switch here. And we're going to run that. I know, it's... It's lazy. There, there we go, that's better. Alright, delete that and then run... This to here. So if both of these are on, it will allow it. So let's say if it gets below... 16 degrees, I want it to turn off. If, if below 16... No, if above 16 degrees, it can turn on, that's fine. Right, because at 16 is the danger zone. If 16 degree water goes through here, it's going to get very close to freezing it. And I just don't want that. So when this gets down, that level, that'll turn off and it'll shut off this one as well. It'll turn off this liquid pump, shut down the aqua tuner, and it'll give the whole chamber time to balance. Because it is moving across, see we're down to 20 here, so it's not too bad. Down to 21, what's the actual sensor say? We're very close to turning off, but that's just a safety measure to make sure we don't get too low because the chamber's quite big. 
Yes, yes, excellent. Okay, cool. So our balancing chamber is basically right. Also, remember to use Abyssalite everywhere. We need to control where our heat is going and where it's coming from. This entire chamber is Abyssalite, and it'll only work that way. I've tried rubber stuff. Insulated uh, tiles aren't Abyssalite are, are poor at the moment. This is a, a very powerful material, to be honest. Probably too powerful, really, but hey. How are we doing upstairs? It has heated up to 39 degrees, come on. Okay, we'll come back when that's ready and we'll test our experiment. Okay, we've reached 40 degrees and to be honest, it's gonna take forever to heat up even higher. So let's go with that. It's a good average temperature. And let's wire this thing in fully. We have a few little bits of crap water to get in there, but it's not a problem. So that's gonna go in and let's begin the system. Okay, so. Our cooled liquid is coming up. It's water. We've never tried this before. It should be interesting. I'm wondering how quick it's going to cool this down. Now, at first, this will run, admittedly, constantly as it balances. Now, how much power is it? 60 watts? If you've got the power to spare, that's fine. It is plastic, so it's late game materials. And uh, basically, yeah, you should have the power really at this point. Come on. But there is an alternative for when we haven't got plastics, which I actually kind of do prefer because it requires no power uh, per system. So this one, for example, it's 60 watts for each setup you've got. So you can have it going up your base, 60 watts per uh, electrolyzer setup that you've got. So maybe two or three. Now this one will work with all of them. We have no extra power, just the pump downstairs, which is really cool. Right, so our liquid's heading in. No, nope, it's escaping, see? I don't know why it does that, it really annoys me. Yeah, okay, so let me correct that real quick, because every time... Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't, and I'm not sure why. But if I do that, clean up the electrolyzer real quick. There we go. That should be okay for now. Go. Cool. I don't know why. It stays in here, usually, but it jumps across there for some reason. I'm not... not a clue. Right, so anyway, we've got nice cool water coming in. And we have 1,000 uh, kilos almost each tile. Now remember to put this here, because if you get a pressure pocket of oxygen or something here, the vent won't overpressurize it, it'll overpressurize the entire thing and explode. Which is pretty cool when you sound that they say it like that, really. Did I actually wire this thing in? I don't think I did, did I? Oh, I wanted to keep it separate from the main system, so it doesn't drain the battery of the self-powering system. Okay, cool. So that's running what it believes is too hot water back down, which is fair enough to be honest. It will run pretty much constantly while it brings the temperature down and we are down to 29 degrees already. Wow, what's it been half a cycle? Holy moly. Excellent. See those shift plates in the back are just getting sucked dry of heat. Haha, <laughs> nice. So down to 29 and it's not even at full power yet. Oh, I like this system, it's good. Yeah, and it, it's very easy to tack on to pretty much anything, to be honest. Now that we have mini pumps and thermo shift plates, you could use this for anything you really want to control the temperature for. Like polymer presses and stuff like that. So we'll look at that in a minute. So actually, while this is cooling down, we're going to have a look at what else we can cool with it. Or should we build the up? No, we'll build the upper system first. Let's start prepping that. Oh, that's the basic setup done. So now we add in our new system, which basically looks like this. Uh, right. So you replace. Oh, let's pause the game real quick. I don't want the hydrogen escaping. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're paused. Okay. So one, two, three. Boom. Then you add in your conductive tiles. You make sure when you build your system, you don't have to reprime it. You throw in your shift plates, you throw in some shift plates there, that's all secured, and run the game again, sweet. Then, this one takes up slightly more space, but it uses less power, it's always that uh, exchange in goods, isn't there, really? Door's gonna go there. Ah, there we go, right, get rid of that. And that. Uh, right, so that's the basic setup for the new one. Doesn't require a pump. Really cool. Okay, so this time, what we're going to do, we're going to have our... Where's it gone? Uh, liquid vent. Boom. There. We're going to have a thermo switch in the usual spot. There. And we're going to have a hydro switch. Hmm. Maybe I should have it there. Blew out one of them, but I don't know why. Right, so that's going to be above 500. We're going to have a logic gate. And it's going to be and. 
and it's going to be along with a buffer gate. Right, so if this, wait, go with that, and this are on, then the door opens. Wait, no. Then the door gets opened via a buffer switch. Boom. 30 seconds ish, just to be sure. Okay, cool, so that's the basic cell, and now we have the drop. Now, I'm going to run... Saying that, I don't think we need to seal this up, do we? Like that should be fine, as long as it's a straight drop. Which might be a problem considering where I put my balancing chamber. No, it shouldn't be too bad. We'll work on it. Wow, this is going to be messy. Oof. And they now can't get to some of the base, but that's fine. Okay, so we're going to isolate this with this light. Now, usually you'd have your balancing chamber a little bit closer. Mine just happens to be at the bottom of the base currently. Kinda sucks, I know. It'd be simpler to pump your... or bring your uh, pump polluted water towards your balancing chamber and aqua tuna than it would to breathe. Bring it back because you don't have to worry about the temperature of the polluted water. So you can pump it up, pump it back. It's not too much of a problem. There's this water in the other hand, or this coolant, I should say, because it could be oil, it could be water, it could be polluted water as well, even. Oof. Is... It has to be monitored, so you have to use abyssalite, which means you know limited resources and all that. So, anyway, that said, we shall have to extend our balancing chamber slightly, admittedly, due to a miscalculation on my part. That's not too much of a problem. And that's basically it. Now we need some mesh tiles here, so our guys can... Well, actually, for the moment, I'm locking that because we'll have to deal with that later. Because we have to get people out of our base. So you can either have them go up over this sort of system or below it. It doesn't have to be this big. It really doesn't. It just happens to be that I'm working it into my current base as a test to see if it works. And I'm hoping it will. Hey, this episode's getting a bit long, so let's get on with this while. Um, so we're going to pump up water from down here, the usual spot. 18 degrees currently. <sighs> a bit cold. So where is it? Here it is. That's working. They powered this up, right? Yes, they have. Cool. Right, so if this is above 25 degrees, and this is above 500, it will allow this door to open, the water will dump out, it will drop down here, no pump required, all the way back into our balancing chamber. Well, once I open... Wait, let's make buildings only, please. Once I open uh, this up... Let's throw some thermal shift plates in to make sure we're okay. Wow, he doesn't have anything in the default mode. Weird. Okay, granite. Okay, cool. Now you see how this can be easily extended. You can just literally add a door for whichever item you want on that level. It's so big here because my base is a bit of a mess. You could have this, this here literally all the way down here if you wanted. The benefit of this is it doesn't require a pump. It doesn't constantly keep going, so it uses much less power. In fact, is the aqua tuna even running right now? Nope. It's uh, cooling upstairs, but it's barely running. I haven't heard it recently. Cool. It's not warming up too much, is it? Now, good. Right, so let's set this system up. Uh, there we go. So where are we taking water from? We'll take it from this line here, just because of convenience. That is our water from the cool chamber, so that is correct. And let's start, well, not straight away. Is this thing going to heat up first? It's at 27. Man, I want it to heat up. Hmm. I want to get that a bit lower. Although, if you look at it, it is pushing the heat back. The oxygen in this area has cooled down to 28 degrees, 27. 28, nice. Hmm. I like that, that's cool. So eventually, once this oxygen starts uh, getting used up, in theory, the base should cool down. In theory. It might take 50 cycles for it to happen, because I've got a lot of oxygen in this base. Okay, so... Hmm, let's let that heat up, and we'll come back to it. Checkpoint system to hopefully... What the hell? <laughs> okay, these duplicates are weird. Uh, hopefully stop them entering this area when water is coming down. Hopefully. I don't know if it's going to work to be honest. Um, basically the buffer gate, I've hooked it up to another buffer gate to add a little bit more time. I added 10 seconds onto it and it should, when active, lock these down. So as water comes down, 
that lock because they can't run through. Of course, if they decide to stand here like a numpty for some reason, then they're going to have issues. Yeah, that is a bit strange. I don't know. Weird. I was thinking maybe doors here or something, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. I just need to see it working first. So, are we at temperature? We're we getting close. Wow. Darn. Okay. Right. Mm, I guess we could try something else as well. The aqua tune is still not running. It's quite happy. It does depend on how much water you've got in this chamber, though. If you have a small amount of water, it will heat up quicker. But we've got literally thousands and thousands of kilos of water in here. So it takes forever to heat back up, especially considering I'm only currently cooling one. Oh no, sorry, two electrolyzers, what am I saying? I'm cooling two. That one's heated up a little bit. So it could be uh, with the oil, but sorry, with water, it's having a bit of trouble keeping up with the thermal conductivity side of it, because the pump can only pump out so much per second. Now, the reason I use the mini pump is because I want to keep this self-regulating system small because that's why it's good. It's self-powered, well, the electrolyzer is self-powered, and basically it doesn't take up much space. It's perfect for that sort of thing. You can pull up one pretty much anywhere you can get water to, which is really cool. Now we're at 30, 31 degrees. It's taking forever. Wow. I wonder if I can force it to heat up somehow. Hmm. Um, I don't think so. Well, actually, if I just throw some hot water in there real quick, that'd do it. That's true. Okay, so I'm hov I'm forcing it to heat up a bit so we can do our experiment right now. I mean, come on. It's, uh, yeah. Which is kind of interesting, because maybe you could translate heat to something really quickly using this method as well. Hmm, interesting. So what are we at? 37? 37.8? 39 almost? Come on. Go, go, go. And I'll have to clip mop this water up before we do the test. Oh, God. Uh, so let's say... Why are they insist on chilling here? It's so strange. It's like, this. I'm going to eat my food right in the waste chamber. It makes no sense. They have an... Oh. Hmm, maybe that's something to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Why have we got low pressure, though? Let's check. Uh, down here's fine. Up there. Oh, I disabled the gas pump that was moving oxygen around, didn't I? That's why. Which makes sense, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to fix that real quick. Okay, so that will clear that up for now at least. Wow. Okay. Hopefully that'll make them happy. Maybe. Yeah. Right, so I've done it from the top one, which is heated up to 40 degrees. Perfect timing. Okay, let me clear this liquid. Right, that chamber's empty, right? Yes, it is. And we're going to set this back to 25 degrees, which means the temperature is still too high right now. It's complaining. Good. Food is decayed. Ah, not good. Insulated to uh, this light and right, it's hooked up. Water of 18 degrees is going in. Let's see how quickly this cools down. Which should be about the same, really. To be honest, 36, 35. See that granite tile is working excellently. Right, so if this is above 25, which it will drop pretty quickly. And if this hydro sensor is above 500, which means from the second tile above, it will open this door and allow fresh, cool water to flow in. Hopefully these doors down here will lock for 40 seconds. I hope. I'm not too sure. We'll have to see when it goes. The question is, where, and when will it go? And the good thing about this system is, because there's such a huge amount of water in there, once it's reached temperature, it doesn't very often open and refresh, to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty good. At least I found that in the debug build, at least. We'll be down to 35. 34. It's dropping quick. Down to 24 on the tiles. And the thermo plates have such a large mass, it does take them longer to come down. So it's refreshing the water. Oop, did it lock it off? No, it didn't. Hold on. No wire connected. Oh, do they need power now? Oh, okay. That makes sense. Oh, well, there you go. You got power. Are they locked now? Nope. Maybe I need to invert the signal then, now that I've... Uh... Why? Timmy, why? If it locks in a few seconds, I need to invert the signal. Yeah, I do. Okay. That's no problem. We can do that. Let's just uh, remove the buffer gate. Remove some of the wiring. Throw in a not gate. Or just a filter? 
Filter will do it, right? I think. Let's check. Um, no. No, so it has to be a knot gate. It's a bit weird. Uh, right, okay. I'm not very good at the automation side of it, so. So a buffer gate here with the 10 second rule again. Come on, 10 second rule. And ba boom. Right, there we go. Let's change that to 10 seconds. Close enough. Okay, so when that empties again, it will lock that door for 10 seconds now. Okay, so we are down to 28 degrees. Nice. This thermal sensor is still active because it still thinks it's too warm, which it is. I want it colder. But the fresh water is cooling it down. It's considered it too hot and it's refreshing again. The doors down here are locked. I like it. Nobody's getting a bath today. Well, unless they decide to eat their meals in there again. And it's going down to the balancing chamber. And the Acrotune is still not doing anything. Over here we're at 19 degrees, and over here we're at 22. Yeah, it's not too bad, to be honest. Ah, <sighs> Right, so I've still got these two kicking out hot oxygen, which is no good. This is cooling down the base. It is competing against all this energy, though, so it will take some time to cool down. But it's working pretty well. 28 degrees. That's pretty sweet. Hmm. I think oil might be slightly better at pulling down harsher. But the pump, um, I don't know, it's weird. I think this system's going to do better, to be honest. Because you can refresh the water more effectively. In fact, the thermal sensor is now mm, semi-happy. But it's cooled down. Which is good. Why did this one cool down quicker than this one? Because more cool water's going in quicker because it's refreshing quicker. Okay, so this system cools it down quicker. So yeah, that's good. And it's come down to 25 degrees. So the downside to this system is, once that water dumps out the side, it's possible it might be prone to a very slight temperature spike, whereas the temperature of this system should be very stable once it equalizes. Hmm. So this system keeps it, you'd have to cool the water down a little bit more, so maybe take it to 15 degrees to pull it down to 20-ish. Yeah, well that should be happening anyway, because the mini pump can't really keep up. Yeah. Whereas this one can keep up very effectively. So this, would, this would be a good system for cooling down heavy machinery. Which is kind of cool. And doors don't require power, or at least not yet. Yeah, sweet. So we're down to 23 degrees. Ah, oh, look at that. Temperate. I've not seen temperate in this base for quite some time. Excellent. So it works. I like it. Now let's see if we can cool something heavy duty down. What are the limits of this system? Okay, so we're going to see if we can cool a polymer press with this thing. They can be quite annoying. And with the way they produce steam and all that jazz. Yeah, I want to see if it can be done. So I'm going to let this thing heat up a little bit. Okay, so 63 degrees. So let's hook up. Uh, let's run through the setup real quick. It's basically exactly the same setup. Conductive tile across. Uh, automation to make sure it dumps the water. And I've run it into the control switch for this so hopefully nobody gets wet maybe so let's throw in the water and see if it's enough i'm not sure i've just set up a basic petro petrol here just to pump into this thing so we can just run it basically uh, maybe we'll have water down here i don't know 67 degrees oh oh my bad yep see things like this Razzi doesn't always think and uh, that one i'm gonna get rid of as well just to be sure Let's insulate that. Silly Raz. There we go. Okay, this tile went... Oh, it's not really conducting it too well. Let it save it. It's getting hot. Let's shut it down for a second. Let this thing fill up. Hmm. Could be there's not enough conduction of the heat. Or it could be because I did pre-fill it. It's sort of just overheating because of that. Obviously right now it's demanding that the water be uh, changed over, which makes sense. Uh, we've got conductive shift plates, so they should be... Hmm, see the press isn't really dumping the heat into the plates too quickly. Which is a bit strange, it should be. Let's see, the plate's heating up? No. I have had this issue before though. I think we need a way to link them sometimes. Sometimes they act strange. It's like, why are they doing that? 
Let's see what happens now. Uh, nope, that didn't do much. So we could use a gas. Oh wait, is there any gas in here? That might be why. Because I've just built this thing. It's a debug. So yeah, there's chlorine here. That's probably why. Um, let's presume it's a place where duplicates are running around. We'll paint the vacuum first. This chlorine is extremely thermally resistant. There we go. So the chlorine was messing it up. Basically, so we're going to just throw some oxygen in here. Oh, what's outside? Or chlorine. Wow. If you don't want chlorine in machinery, no way. So let's say we have a, an, a basic, very basic. What temperature is that? That is um, 30 degrees ish. 39 degree oxygen. That's probably ideal, really. Okay. What's in here? More oxygen. We'll paint a little bit more in just to simulate a working environment. Oh, that may be too much oxygen. I didn't change the uh, amount. Whoops. My bad. Thank you. Come on. There's a lot of oxygen here right now. <laughs> okay, so we've got a kilo of oxygen in, in here now. Hopefully that will allow conduction of heat. So let's get rid of this liquid bridge. Let's presume we don't need it, although... Man, broke it a little bit. This is filling. Oh, we've only got one pump downstairs, so admittedly, the more you add, the lower it's going to be to. Why are these tiles breaking? They shouldn't be over. I know why. Right, okay, yeah, I know why that's happening. Uh, so, a slight adjustment to the design. That needs to go there like that. Otherwise, you're going to have an oxygen issue. Well, gas issue building up above your. Uh, system and the bottom will blow out like I discussed earlier actually yeah so there we go that's that sorted that's filling up nicely it is cooling down area okay let's try it again enable building building temperature wow that heats up quick yeah it could be too quick to be honest damn son Okay, so I made a slight adjustment to it. Uh, yeah, I think it's because it's not in great contact with these tiles here. But the floor tiles that it's on, it's a lot better. The question is, how do we get the water out of there easily? Uh, yeah, the hydro switch is going to have to come down, I think. So let's move the hydro switch down. Let's bring it to here. There, well, there, here, there, here. Hmm. Bring it to there seems more reasonable. And fill that in. Okay, so if above 500, then it is. Yeah. Get rid of that one. It has cooled it down. We're down to 39 degrees. So it might be better if just the one that's underneath the system would work best. You need to be able to guarantee that the water gets out, though. That's the difficult bit. Hmm. Oh, saying that, let's throw the uh, what? displacement tiles. Where are they? Shift plate. Like that. See what that does. So we're down to 30. Whoa. Going back up. That's weird. 41 degrees. Mm, it's on the edge. I think oil might be a better use here, to be honest. It's got more cooling capacity. Well, more conductivity, less capacity. Yeah. So it'll operate faster, but it'll shift more heat quicker. In theory, 39 degrees. Although it's not overheating at the moment, so there's that. And you have your fresh water down here that you can pump away if you wanted to. And it's running constantly, so yeah. I think a revised version of this would work. The question is, have we got time for it? And the answer is no, not at the moment. So I was hoping to try cooling the guys with this sort of thing for a laugh, because the guys are on this map is. Uh, a little bit hot. I can't even send my guys in there without extra suits right now. But, yeah, I think it could do it, you know. It'd be more effective than the hydrogen I'm trying to do, that's for sure. But that's because of the sheer amount of water. But yeah, oil would be your best bet for that one because it could take it to minus 40. Ooh, another thing for the polymer press. It, we want it as cold as possible, really. So the plastic's nice and uh, safe. That's really hot. So close to melting. So you could use oil at minus 30 in here, 
instead of water, which would be far more effective. Although, to be fair, it has cooled it down to 36 degrees, so I'm fairly happy with that. That's actually working out quite well. I'm surprised. Huh. Cool. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, if we were to revise that a little bit, I think we'd be alright. I don't believe cooling the petrol before it goes in makes a difference. I don't see why it would. It is at 40 degrees. I'm pretty sure that won't help. This here, though, does work. I just need to revise the design a little bit. So anyway, I'm Casual Raz. This has been a strange but unfortunately quite long introduction to cooling in weird and wonderful ways. We found a few issues and corrected them as we go. I'm quite happy with this. How it works. As long as water doesn't get into there, that should be fine. Dumps down here. I don't know why they love chilling here. It's so strange. The, my duplicates are very odd. Are any of these systems close to activating? No, unfortunately not. Ooh, let's see if we can force this one to go real quick. See, the water, the water is holding. Yeah. You could use um, airflow tiles, possibly. And they're metal, so they'll have a greater conduct thermal conductivity. But that's something to try another time, because we have run out of time, unfortunately. So I'm Casual Braz. This has been a strange introduction to cooling stuff with balancing chambers and liquids in the automated update because while the doors are so OP right now it's crazy and the mini liquid pumps are really good for getting into small places so I'll see you all next time if I've uh, entertained you enough please subscribe and check out my other stuff where you do auction let's plays like all the time because I love this game it's so amazing and I'll see you all next time